So this video is a continuation of the drop shuttle lifting body experiment. In my previous video, I mainly focused on making functional lifting body designs out of insulation foam and some fiberglass. But during that video, I also went ahead and messed around with the idea of dropping a super heavy drop shuttle glider and making it aerodynamically stable in the air and also be able to perform a smooth landing just like the space shuttle. If you don't already know, RC Test Flight has probably experimented with this concept the most and made many videos, like making a solid wood plane fly, FPV gyro stabilized lifting bodies and gliders, automated landing tests and more. So this video is a result of watching all those and trying to perform my own tests and trying to make a heavy aerodynamically stable shuttle glider. But if you're more interested in lifting body gliders then I suggest you go watch the first video. But don't worry because I will be making a future video just about dropping these fine breaks from the sky. So stay tuned for that. But in this video I'm going to be mainly experimenting with delta wing style aircraft and there are many design principles that make an aircraft like this naturally stable which I'll talk a little bit more about later. But first we need something to drop these gliders from super high altitudes and in my last video I made this simple slow cruiser design to fly nice and slow. Now, after doing many flight tests, I decided this would be the perfect plane for dropping things. First thing I did is to fix up the plane and make some renovations to make it a little stronger than before because it did crash a little bit. And then I designed this little casing for this servo, this 9 gram servo, to release the gliders. All these gliders are mostly going to just be um, just free fly, no controls or anything, so I need to give them a hook and then make them be able to drop from the plane. So I just attached this in the plane, glued it on. Uh, I kind of rushed it, but it's fine for now. And then you can see it works pretty well. And after that, I quickly designed some shuttle gliders, some really light ones. They were just uh, some insulation foam with some foam plate wings. These are not designed to fly well at all. Uh, they're just meant to test the drop mechanism. But I designed a few, just a little different, but they're probably just all just going to be blown away from the wind. But it was time to test the drop mechanism for the first time. So before testing out the gliders, I just did a quick test flight just to see how it flew. Um, the only reason why I really did this was because there was a lot of wind. You can really hear it in the audio. But yeah, I was not entirely sure if this lightweight plane could handle all the wind, but it seems to handle it just fine. So I just did a quick test flight, and then I put on the first one. I think this was like the base one or just the standard <laughs> shuttle glider. It was time to see how this one would fly. And for some reason, this plane just preferred to fly upside down. Not entirely sure why. Maybe the CG wasn't quite right. Uh, I tested it again for a second time, and it did the same thing. So um, not entirely sure. It also might just be because the wind is really crazy. You can see when I'm landing here just how slow the plane is going. So it just shows you how powerful that headwind is. Um, but I went ahead and then added some nuts to the bottom of the plane to hopefully get move the CGs further down to get it to fly upright. And uh, went to test this one out. And surprisingly, after releasing it, it actually started to fly. Uh, not that great, it was still just getting blown away sideways, but still pretty good for such a small glider. The wind's not that bad, but for how like how light those things are, it, it was like, it was aerodynamically stable, but the wind was just pushing it across, so it looked like it was just flying sideways. They're going everywhere. <laughs> it's way too windy today. Okay, now we got the chunky one, the chunky airfoil. I don't know if this one will fly, but it's a little heavier than the others, so maybe it'll fly? I don't know. And nope, still just flying upside down. Um, I think the biggest problem with these gliders is that they can kind of fly both ways, which means when they're flying upside down, they won't like flip back to the right side up by themselves. So I didn't really know how to fix this issue at this time. So I kind of just went ahead and designed some heavier versions for now. So next thing I did was take the design that flew really well, measured the CG and dimensions, and redesigned it in on shape. The only major difference I did with this design compared to the foam one is that the wingtips have a slight negative pitch in relation to the body. The whole reason for this is because in standard planes with wings and horizontal stabilizers, the horizontal stabilizers have a slight negative pitch in relation to the body for pitch stability, causing the aircraft wanting to naturally climb on its own. But since there are no horizontal stabilizers on delta wings and flying wings in general, the ends are given the negative pitch to push the tail down. Looking back, what I really should have done is also add some reflex at the ends of the airfoil profile to give some more pitch up command, but I ended up just forgetting. I printed this using standard PLA on my Quiddy XCF Pro. After it finished, I glued the two parts together and it was done, but I ended up not testing this heavy version until much later for some reason. After that, I took one of the lightweight gliders I made and then cut a hole to put a heavy bolt in it, 
and made it heavy enough to where it was unable to fly when just hand thrown. I also went ahead and designed a couple weird variations of different shuttle gliders, but I'll get to that once we start testing. On the first drop of the foam glider with the heavy bolt, it just seemed to spiral down to the ground. It might have not been dropped from high enough, but it looks like it wasn't even close to recovering, so not entirely sure what happened. And for fun, I also brought the lifting body design that flew really well in my previous video, but that just tumbled down to the ground also. On the second drop of the heavy foam glider, I made sure it was dropped from really high, and it actually started to fly. Before suddenly pinching down and flying upside down again. This could signify that the glider was too tail heavy, resulting in a stall. What's really weird is that it seemed to do some pitch up and down oscillations before spiraling, which is pretty weird. Yeah, still just landed upside down. And after that, I decided to give the lifting body one more try, and it still just had the same issue of just spiraling down to the ground. But I think I'll mess around with lifting bodies in the next video. And with that, it was time to go to a bigger spot to test out some more heavy gliders. To our surprise, we found this area right next to the park we just tested at. And it was like five times as big. So it was a nice open space. Not many people were there. So it was a perfect spot to continue testing. On these next few drops, I tried adding some more weight in the front of the foam glider to prevent it from stalling. But that just seemed to make it turn into a missile. There's a possibility that this glider could have flew if it was dropped from high enough, but it should be able to at least pull up from the dive a little from this altitude since it's not that heavy. So on the next drop, I did a bit of tweaking on the CG, and this time it really went. So on this flight, you can clearly see how it initially dropped straight down because its gravitational forces outweighed its aerodynamic lift. But once it was going fast enough, the aerodynamic forces overcame the gravity, causing it to fly. And then it did a big turn, causing it to lose speed and drop back down. But once again, after it leveled back out, it started flying again. Really cool to see. Yeah, so that time, it actually pulled out of the dive, which I'm actually really surprised it did, even though it's like really beat up. Surprisingly, it didn't break this time. Okay, so we tried fixing it up. We needed a lot of tape because the phone keeps breaking, so it's a little warped. But we're going to see if we can get it to fly as well as last time. Maybe the CGR wings got messed up after the first successful flight, but I went ahead and tried it again and it just spiraled down to the ground. Another thing to note is that the shuttle glider is very small, probably just about the size of my hand, meaning any tiny changes can really affect its flight performance. Alright, I've been walking for a while. I have no idea where it is, but it's really hard to find that thing in such tall grass, semi-tall grass. Is that it? No. Oh, I think that's it. Yeah, there we go. Still fine, I think might have been a little too nosy because of all the tape, but also need to set vertical stabilizer. So after I moved the CG a little further back and gave the wings some more reflex, I got this flight. Ready? Uh, oh good, this one. Yeah. Okay, okay, I'm not watching I need that tape. I need that tape. Oh yeah, it flies so much faster. Oh, it flies so well, it's going up. Oh whoa! Oh! Oh, oh it's no coming! It's coming back! <laughs> Now let's just take a second to appreciate how beautiful that flight was. I mean, it did a full turn all the way back to my dad, which is really cool to see this thing flying up close. Another thing is that up close, you can also see the up and down oscillations I was talking a little bit about uh, last time with this flight. And it's really weird. I'm not entirely sure what's causing this, but it seems to be doing this on every flight now that I look closer. There's a dog just right there with no one. Is it, is it theirs? <laughs> Man, <he's... laughs> look how fast he is. Alright, time for flight time. We're now going into the wind, so hopefully we can take off a little sooner. On the next flight of the shuttle glider, I tried straightening out the wings the best I could, so to see how far I could fly, just flying straight. And, oh wow, this thing really exceeded my expectations. It's still flying? Yeah. No way. I mean, the CG and everything about this plane must have just been perfect for this flight because it just settled on the smoothest glide path I've ever seen. No weird oscillations or everything, just perfectly straight. And it makes it more impressive. This glider is super small and it has a bolt strapped to it. So yeah, I'm very happy with how this glider performed. All right, by far, 
the best test day ever. I'm actually so surprised how long that flight was. But um, it'd be interesting to try making like an at um, autonomous plane and then just have it fly in circles. That way I can drop and observe better. Um, but for right now, thing is holding up pretty good. I'm gonna need to do some reinforcement. So it turns out my soldering job was not the best and it actually came apart when I was unplugging it, like really easily. You can see it's completely off. So thankfully it didn't lose power while flying because that would have been really bad. Uh, could have flown over into the road, but thankfully it didn't, and I need to fix that. But overall, everything else is, it should be fine. I also need to fix this motor mount. After fixing up the plane, I went to town with designing some new drop shuttles. This one is essentially just a glider that flew really well, but has an airfoil and is twice the weight. This shuttle glider is pretty normal, but it's meant to test out the flipping upside down issue I've been having a lot with my other gliders. And then I 3D printed this weird blended body flying wing thingy. I was hoping making it more aerodynamic would help it fly. The good thing about the 3D printed designs is that it's really easy to reprint and also make iterations, which is why in the next video on this project I will be primarily focusing on 3D prints. I also designed a few other drop shuttles, but some of them I didn't end up testing. Now a little unrelated to the project, but I made this giant RC carrier that I created to tow planes but also carry stuff. It has these giant long wings for extra slow flight and efficiency, but it's just been sitting in the corner of the basement for about two months, so I decided right now would be a perfect time for its maiden. Unfortunately, on all the days I went here to test flying, it was like quite windy. So not the best conditions for this really light, foamy glider that's really slow, but you can really see how nice it flies. It's, it's a pretty nice flyer either way. So I decided to put on the heavy one, or I need to give these names because I don't have names for them, but just this one. I put it on and yeah, I just lawn darted. Looking back at the footage, it actually looked like it was starting to pull up, but then it just fell back down to the ground. This probably means it was slightly too tail heavy, making it so it would pull up prematurely before reaching the correct airspeed. I'm not entirely sure, but I really should have dropped this glider from much higher, but unfortunately I forgot to charge the battery for this plane before flying, so it basically died after two flights. But don't worry, at the end of this video I will be doing some dumb stuff and some more flying with this plane. So yeah, so stay tuned for that if you want some bonus footage. On the second flight, it just seed potted down to the ground. So to increase the chances of getting this heavyweight glider to actually fly, making it bigger should help it have more consistent flight characteristics. But unfortunately, on the third flight where there wasn't any footage, it hit the ground pretty hard. And it got pretty much destroyed, so that was the end of that design. Next, I took up the white foam board light shuttle glider up there. Uh, the whole point of this was just to figure out what was causing these gliders to fly upside down. And ironically, this one would only fly upside down. I did a bunch of tweaking with the CG and the wings and random stuff, and in every single flight it just looked like this, so really couldn't figure out that issue, but if you guys have any ideas, let me know. Okay, we now got the first 3D printed one. This, prob this one will probably just crash, not fly. Not having much luck with the heavy ones, but we'll see. And yep is just seed potting again <laughs> uh, i didn't have too much hope with this one because it's just really boxing really heavy uh and i only tested this design once because the battery on my plane was running pretty low so i decided to give the blended 3d printed wing body design uh try before my battery died okay this is the final 3d printed one unfortunately on most of the drops it would just porpoise or pull up prematurely It was either too tail heavy or upside down. This flight was probably the closest to achieving actual flight, but it still ended up stalling and spiraling down to the ground. CG was probably still not correct. For fun, I took the shuttle glider that flew really well last time just to see if it could still fly even though it was really beat up. And yep, this one had no problems flying. Alright, I've been looking for that plane for a while. Look at this giant ant colony, Jesus. I think those are fire ants, probably want to stay away from that, but that's humongous. <laughs> Here's just a comparison of my foot. Yeah, that is the biggest fire ant I've ever seen. Oh my god, I finally found it. These, these always end up in the most unexpected places. I thought it was all the way over there. I was just walking back and I found it. On the final flight of the 3D printed blended body design, I taped down a heavy bolt to move the CG way further up, and it looked promising. 
but it turns out it was once again inverted. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> that is like a bomb. It just went straight hill. down into the ground. Oh. oh my god. There's a chance that this glider could have flew if it was dropped from higher, but the overall goal is to make these stable enough to fly on their own. So having these flying upside down really wouldn't work that well. And if you're wondering why this was the final test, this is why. So yeah, that's pretty much all the testing I'm going to do for this video. I was really hoping to get some more flights out of the really heavy drop shuttles, but I think I have to do some more tinkering with those. But hey, at least we got those really good flights with the heavy foam glider. I have a couple ideas to how to improve these 3D printed designs, but I'll save that for the next video. But now I want to get back to the big RC carrier, and I also promised some bonus footage, so here's that. First thing I wanted to do is attach a GoPro for some onboard footage. So I cut a hole in the wing and also added Velcro so the GoPro would stay securely inside, and this is how it looks. I'll be saving the onboard footage at the very end, but while flying, my dad brought his super expensive camera he uses for photography and took some videos. And oh boy, just look at that quality. Way better than my phone camera. And after doing a few flights around the field, it was time to do the dumb stuff. When designing this plane, I made it so I had a retractable hook on the tail, so I decided to try out the towing mechanism for the first time. But I didn't have any time to build a tow glider optimized for this plane, so I just grabbed some tiny ones I had laying around. And as you can tell, they are way too small for this plane. So with knowing that this was not going to work at all, I just decided to put on my Liddy glider anyways, even though it was just going to get spun around. So I decided to give it a try, and this turned out to be a really bad idea. So yeah, this is going to be pretty much it for this video. I do want to experiment a little bit more with the tow gliding experiment, but for now I'm kind of focused on this drop shuttle stuff. So yeah, I'm going to leave you with this cool onboard footage and that's going to be pretty much it for the video. Thank you for watching.